So yesterday we had the confirmation finally of Betsy DeVos as Education Secretary. Vice President Pence had to come in and break the tie uh, because uh, Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski defected uh, to the Democrats. Uh, you know, was this a worthwhile endeavor at all for the Democrats to pull this? Um, well, they keep hollering that you know this is the worst person ever. This is the worst. Now they're turned to Sessions, and you know he's the worst person ever. But it's like how many worst persons ever can there be? Right. Um, the the um, as for Collins, you kind of expected her to flip. She flips. Right. Yeah. That's what she does. Murkowski. Uh, that was something um, that bodes ill because Murkowski flipped because of enormous pressure. She got a bunch of letters in her office and it's like, you know, you're going to get letters. Right. People are not going to be for all this stuff. But the other thing about the thing you have to know about Alaska is and I, I write some stuff about Alaska and. Alaska is one of the most government-dependent states, and you, you're either making all your money in the oil fields or you're dependent on government. It's the highest rate of, of government dependency, highest rate of spending on government programs, uh, highest rate of government employees in the nation. And so it's a state that, that, that lives on government money, basically, um, and the $55 billion they have in the savings account from the oil. Um, the DeVos victory is extremely significant. Uh, there, there is no area of government that needs to be the tables overturned and the people chased out of the temple like uh, education. You know, there's some that are equal, but there's none anymore. And now you have someone who who comes in ready to have those uh, make those take those steps. And those are hard steps because you know this was an ent uh, an entrenched bureaucracy in Washington that is not used to ever losing these kind of battles and they got the two you know you got you needed three they got the two relatively quickly and then they could not push that third one over the line and I think that's a huge thing that the Senate stood strong and that you're gonna this kind of tells you if I'm them I don't waste any more political capital fighting Trump nominees I just vote them in and move on because you're not going to win this was the one you could have won yeah, and maybe some of the other Republican <coughs> senators look at this and they say, "Well, yeah, we know maybe like you, we kind of expect Susan Collins that you know she would be someone who would who would readily flip." Uh, Murkowski, you know, looking at those federal dollars and not having much of a spine if she's going to cave in on just people putting pressure on her through letters and stuff like that uh, to try to turn her, uh, you know, and you know what's what's interesting to me, or at least what I'm kind of curious about with DeVos is that we had Reagan who wanted to dismantle the Department of Education which was a lofty goal. How do you dismantle an entire bureaucracy like that? Uh, it's, just, it's difficult. I mean, I don't think, it's not necessarily impossible, but it's really difficult. Betsy you know, it's easier then because it had just, it was young. Right, you know, right. Carter started and, it. Right, and now you've got years and years, you know, decades yeah. now of, of this, uh, more, even more entrenched. Uh, you know, Betsy DeVos doesn't have to necessarily dismantle the Department of Education, but she can kind of blow those things up with how systems, how things are run, uh, and, and talk about more school choice and the vouchers and things like that to give the kids a better education overall. Right, and I think what she needs to talk about is uh, creating opportunities for the people in failing schools, because that's the thing that resonates across the whole political spectrum. You know, at, at, um, at Heritage Foundation, they have, you know, they kind of ran that consortium they had the meetings there they gave them all the space and so forth and stuff they needed to have the dc school choice and they every time the authorization comes up they all get back together and go fight for it again and you know you would go to those meetings and it was like people you never thought you'd see on the inside of the heritage foundation were there all the time because we were that, that we were part of that coalition um and uh it, this is a thing this is an issue that has a real chance to like transcend left-right politics. Right, let me ask you this question though, this is something, do you think uh, in terms of you know, this issue, particularly how it has appealed very much so to, uh, to black communities, particularly inner city black communities who are sick and tired of the, the failing schools that they have to send their kids to, do you, do, did the liberals take their communities for granted that they would always support the teachers unions and these schools and are they surprised and disappointed and thinking like, did they screw something up yeah, here? Yeah, they're stunned by this. They thought certainly we have enough, you know, a, a, a person like DeVos who is so clearly identified with the other side of this, certainly we can convince people that this would be a radical departure and too dangerous and so forth. And no, they, did, they didn't move the, 
the ball much at all. They, you know, wrote Lisa Murkowski lunch letters and Collins flipped as she do, and nothing moved, right? This is an extraordinary political development in Washington. This is a realignment of the coalitions in Washington. Well, can you imagine it, too, if, if you know, she's, she starts getting her people in place and they start moving things forward, but can you ma- – I'm just thinking about potential uh, photo ops or pictures down the line or whatever mm-hmm. you want to call them, where, where she's there with leading members of the black community – uh, talking about education reform and talking about school choice and vouchers and how to how to how to take this and help their kids, you know the optics of this would be unbelievable in yeah. the Trump administration. Right, and uh, Hispanics. And yeah, like, you, 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 this is really one. You know, when he talks about, uh, he's talked a lot in the campaign about how bad the cities were. You know, people like mocked it. Oh, our city's not that bad. These guys see it as bad, right? These guys see if I go out at night, I might get shot. Uh, my kid might have to, you know, join a gang to be safe. You know, uh, they're they're ready f- to see another path. And and this is a clear, the good thing about like almost all the stuff Trump does is it's a clear departure. Yeah, it's not business as usual. And what I always thought was interesting <clears> is that <throat> D.C., you know, has these charter school programs and things like that. And look at you look at the population mix in the community, and we can't get diddly squat done in Maryland. Right. You well, know? D.C. is the only federally funded one. Too. Yeah. Now, my boss, Tom Davis, was the one who carried that through Congress. Um, the other thing about DeVos is I want, I hope, I have not heard her talk about, and I would like to hear more of what she thinks about college. I think the, you know, the, most of the focus on her is K-12. Um, and But the, the a lot of work needs to be done on higher education. You know, it sort of came to the forefront with the California situation last week. But, you know, the this is a, an off the rails operation it is probably 500 600% too expensive right and it you know you have states like uh what last year the last year of the Bobby Jindal administration in Louisiana he, he proposed a budget that cut 72% of college funding in in the state one year one year whack off 72% that's a big cut right and it ended up being about 40% you know, they negotiated, found some money and so forth. But you're going to start seeing states, they're not come close to meeting these obligations anymore. Um, they have all these other aging population that, you know, especially the idiots who added Medicaid people during yeah. Obamacare. You know, they have big problems. And, you know, uh, middle class entitlements, such as paying for college, are, are going to go down to the bottom of the list. So it needs to be reform. There's a long way to go on that.